Hey everyone, we just had an earthquake magnitude 4.4 in California in a critical area. And that's why instead of going to sleep, which where I was about to, I just walked the dogs one last time. It's right now 4.35 a.m. here. I've been busy with editing videos for you guys all the time. I just released another update about 3i Atlas. Then I saw that there is an earthquake swarm going on in California near San Diego, near the Salton Sea. A new study points to a type of rock on the San Andreas Fault that may signal where the big one could hit. And it's here in Southern California. The rock was found near the Salton Sea, where small seismic activity has been recorded. The Geological Society of America says that the Dermid ladder structure could be ground zero for the big one. And I said at the beginning, it is critical, guys, because this is where the San Andreas Fault is. And this is the area where scientists are saying this is where the San Andreas Fault is locked and loaded the most, and this is where we potentially could see the start of the rupture of the San Andreas Fault. So magnitude 4.4 earthquake struck close to the border between California and Mexico at a line of San Diego, but south of the Salton Sea. It was felt throughout Imperial County in cities like El Cento, Calexico, and it was also felt in Mexicali and Yuma in Arizona. Reported depth right now is 20 kilometers, which is fairly deep for Southern California, we have to say. And you see on the map, we have quite a few foreshocks and aftershock. One foreshock was magnitude 3.5 at 1.40 a.m. in the morning, also felt in nearby cities. 25-ish, um, 30 aftershocks, so four have been detected until now, but magnitude 4.4, Salton Sea. I want you to look at that map here. So you see the San Andreas Fault, it basically ends with the Salton Sea. And then basically, if we go a little bit further south of the Salton Sea, we have the Inf Imperial Fault system. And you see all the red lines, the Borrego Mountain Fault, um, the Superstition Hills Fault. So it's a branch system of faults there that goes like left and right from the San Andreas Fault. So the earthquake's not directly on the San Andreas Fault as it seems of right now. But if you watch my channel on a regular basis, which I hope you do, by the way, please subscribe and give this video a like and a hype for my late night activity. Doesn't cost you anything, helps my channel, guys. Um, the branches, if they shake around, they can trigger the big fault. There have been studies about this, and that's why this is crucial, and we need to monitor this, because this is quite intense if you look at all the dots that we see on that map here. So south of the Salton Sea, right? San Andreas Fa uh, fault basically terminates near Bombay Beach off the Salton Sea, it connects it, so to speak, with the Imperial Fault, and it's called the Seismically Active Brawley Seismic zone. So it's a complex, we can call it a step over from the San Andreas Fault. The plates are shifting there and um, accommodating the Pacific and the North American plate movement. And it also is forming the start of the Gulf of California rift system. What we have, we can say that the San Andreas Fault at the Salton Sea is basically creating a complex pull apart zone. We have normal faults beneath the Salton Sea and they are interacting with the main fault. And again, I said that could potentially trigger major earthquakes. We have past earthquakes that are correlating to period when ancient lakes were filled in the basin. So. The Southern San Andreas Fault is locked and loaded. It's overdue for a large quake, but we have also studies and that is interesting. They suggest that the drying salt and sea might have eased the strain for the San Andreas Fault, maybe delaying it, um, but seismic activity is a significant hazard in the region. I have reported about that salt and sea issue and the water level that plays a key role there. So I'll put it in the end screen. I think it's worth watching it right after this one because you can learn a lot about that area. So the salt and sea is a critical nexus where the San Andreas Fault's sideways motion 
like strike slip fault interacts with vertical faulting. And that, of course, as you can imagine, creates itself a unique seismic behavior. And then if we have the salt and sea and we have changes in the water load uh, from shifting levels of the ancient and the modern salt and sea, um, the studies found that it has a noticeable impact on the stress and, and on the triggering of earthquakes right on the fault line. And especially at the southern end near Bombay Beach, we have a very dense network of a lot of smaller faults that they have identified beneath the salt and seas. So these so-called, we call them normal faults, they experience vertical movement in which the block above the fault moves downwards relative to the block below rather than the typical sideways motion of the San Andreas fault. And we know that these faults have been active definitely within the last two to three thousand years and at least four of these events have coincided with major ruptures of the southern San Andreas Fault. That's why I said at the beginning, geez, that is important. So they could act as indirect records of past San Andreas earthquakes. So important is what scientists found out that the direction of a San Andreas rupture plays a role in triggering all these normal faults. Models suggest that if the southern San Andreas Fault breaks north, south, it is much more likely to cause a vertical displacement of these other faults than if it ruptures in the opposite direction from south to north. So the water levels of the Salton Sea, it's important where the, lab, uh, where the water sits, how mass, how much mass, where is it and how fast does it change? It's basically surface loading physics. When a large body of water rises, it adds weight to the crust, right? Like glaciers also. So the extra load slightly compresses the crust vertically and it can reduce the shear stress on some nearby falls. So when the water levels fall, the opposite happens. The crust rebounds sort of thing and the stresses can be redistributed towards nearby faults. So these stress changes, yes, they're small, but in tectonically sensitive regions like this one here, small changes can matter. And the Salton Sea, why is it so special? The Salton Sea sits in the Salton Trough. That's a tectonically stretched and fractured region that directly, as I said, links the Imperial Fault System to the Southern San Andreas. The crust there is very thin, it's hot and as we can say, mechanically weak, which makes it more responsive to surface loading than older, thicker crusts somewhere else. So very, very critical area. And historically, the Salton Sea has reached its highest and most stable levels in the mid 20th century when agricultural inflows were strong. So that meant decades of relatively constant water mass that was sitting in the basin. In mechanical uh, terms, we can say that that steady load likely has smoothed stress changes rather than amplifying them. And third, did higher water levels like ease the strain on the San Andreas, as I just said. Careful wording is very essential here. So the water itself did not release tectonic strain. It did not unlock the fault. It did not prevent an earthquake. What higher water levels may have done is slightly modify the stress transfer at the southern end of the fault system, potentially reducing stress concentration on shallow fault segments near the salt and trough during periods of high stable water load. So think of it, I would say like this, the San Andreas Fault is a compressed spring locked fault at depth. And adding surface water is like pressing gently on the casing. Huh? So not releasing the spring itself, but possibly changing where micro fractures are active around it. So today we have falling water levels. At the, the Salton Sea has shrunk rapidly. The, sh the system has shifted from stable loading to rapid unloading. And that unloading causes elastic rebound of the crust, stress redistribution across shallow faults, increased likelihood now of small to moderate earthquakes, 
on secondary faults of the San Andreas Fault. So this basically aligns with, with what we're observing right now, today. Frequent earthquake swarms in the Imperial Valley, while the main southern San Andreas Fault segment still remains locked and loaded. So the key conclusion that we can draw from this higher historical water levels at the Salton Slee might have slightly dampened shallow stress changes, but they never ever removed the long-term tectonic strain. I want to make that clear that that strain that is accumulating at the Southern San Andreas Fault. So water levels as they fall, that modest buffering effect has disappeared now we are left with a more stress sensitive system, even though the main fault itself is locked and loaded. So the water level matters not because it controls the earthquake um, or the earthquakes, but because in a critically stressed tectonic environment, even small surface loads can influence where and how the crust rebounds. Guys, I'm going to monitor this for you. Check out my videos in the end screen. Interesting stuff with 3i Atlas. We have a new date that is of utmost importance and could clear what that anti-tail is. January 19th. It's aligning. Atlas is aligning again with Earth and Sun in one line. You have to watch this. See you there. Bye-bye.